Hey everybody, I've got a new video for you here. Uh, I've been getting a lot of questions about how to make a new workspace from scratch uh, by a lot of folks because people are getting pretty excited about extending Chili Pepper. So I went ahead and actually um, modified the home page to kind of help give folks uh, an easier way to do this. And there is now a sample workspace on GitHub that's a pretty nice template that you can fork. And uh, if you look at this screenshot of that template, it's got stuff you'll probably use, like the Serialport JSON server widget to connect to SBJS and then the console. But then the rest of it's sort of up to you, like these dashed lines would sort of represent it. It's a three step process. You got to fork it, then you got to open it into the editor, Cloud9. Of course, you can use your own editor, it doesn't really matter. And then you pick the new workspace name. So I'll walk you through it right now. Uh, you click on that button and it takes you to GitHub to this uh, workspace sample project. And I'm logged in as John Lauer, and you'll be logged in as your own ID, and you just click fork. You fork it into your uh, own um, GitHub, see it's John Lauer slash workspace sample. And then what I recommend is you change the name pretty readily. Uh, and so I'll just kind of call it workspace dash John um, one, and I'll rename it. So I've got that, and then I'll, I'll edit this. Um, I'll say uh, a chili pepper workspace for showing folks how to make their own. Just get that kind of cleaned up. And then um, the readme you're going to want to modify, but the fact is uh, the runme.js uh, will do it for you. So I recommend at this point you jump to Cloud9. So what you could do now is go back to um, the Chili Pepper homepage and just click this link to Cloud9, uh, although frankly you could type it in yourself. Uh, but I'll click over to Cloud9. It takes me right to my account repos. Uh, if you don't have a Cloud9 account, go ahead and do it, but when you create your account, you will want to, um, you'll want to sign in via GitHub. So really quick, I'll sign out and you'll want to actually do a sign in with GitHub because then it associates your GitHub account with your Cloud9 and then you go to the repositories tab over here and all of your forked GitHub projects uh, exist in here and you'll see I have workspace-john1 right here I'm not really sure the order they use here but either way hit clone to edit it's gonna pull in the project um, it creates a backing um, Docker instance behind it, so you sort of end up with a little virtual machine that stuff runs in, and that's handy because I made a script called runme.js. It's a node web server uh, that I recommend you right click on and start running uh, immediately, and you'll see a tab open up down here where it starts running the node server, and then I open it in preview mode. The reason is, is that when you hit reload like this, it generates the new readme file, it generates your auto-generated workspace HTML file, and it pushes your updates to GitHub, so it's really convenient. I find that while I'm developing, I just keep hitting reload uh, every time I want to de go deploy and test it out. So this file over here is what gets generated. The reason it generates this is if you were familiar with JS Fiddle, JS Fiddle would let you edit your CSS, your HTML, and your JavaScript, and it would generate a monolithic HTML file on its own available at a URL dynamically. We lose that functionality in Cloud9 and I would say that's actually uh, sad that we lost it because things are a little bit more you're seeing more of the sausage making now but it's working pretty well. Remember the way Chili Pepper works is every widget and a workspace is really just a big widget that contains other widgets they're all just HTML files but they're inlined. Everything about Chili Pepper uh, is about inlining your JavaScript, your HTML, and your CSS into one module and then sucking it into an overall larger workspace. Um, so let's go ahead and get started now modifying the, um, the widget. And so all I really want to do is there's this notion of IDs um, and you want to change this ID to then be the new ID. So instead of it being workspace-sample, remember I called it dash John 1. So I'm going to go ahead and um, find the word sample, replace it with John 1, replace, 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 replace that, replace that. And that's all we found there. So I'll save that. Uh, I'll now go to the HTML file and I will look for the word sample. 
and I found it right here in the um, in this header, which is probably the only place you should get it. Well, here I'll replace that John one, and then that class of sample we don't want to replace. So here, right there, we'll replace that. Okay, and then I'll save that, and then we'll go over to the CSS and see if there's anything we got to replace here. And as far as I know, there's not. So we're good. We should now actually be able to preview this inside the editor. Uh, and there we have it. Workspace John 1. Widget 1 goes here. Here's the serial port console. Widget 2 goes here. And widget 3. So already we now have it forked. And um, if I go back to the JavaScript, I want to do a little bit more cleanup here. This ID is correct. Workspace John 1. I'm going to chili pepper workspace to show folks how to make their um, and then I'll hit save. I'll go back to this run me JS and I'll hit reload like I was telling you guys. And then notice it updates the name here. It pulls in that description for you. It um, pulls this in correctly. And it does generate all of these URLs for you. So the chili pepper load URL. This is the monolithic auto generated workspace file that you could pull right from GitHub user content. That's really sort of the main page now that Chili Pepper will, will slurp in. And notice it's got all your CSS. It's got your, um, your code. And it's got your HTML. That's all a Chili Pepper widget is. It's a monolithic HTML file with CSS and JavaScript. And again, you could host it anywhere. You could develop it anywhere. Uh, Chili Pepper really is very flexible. It's just that there's sort of some best practices. Um, but d feel free to, to build your own best practices. The README file is also regenerated. So if we refresh this, uh, that's there. And if, if I go ahead now and open the GitHub URL, we should see our updates. And sure enough, we do. Um, and you can see all of these are like a minute ago. Okay. So. Let's now go back to the Chili Pepper homepage and go back to that step three, which is to pick a new workspace name. So you click this and it loads the, uh, the sample workspace. But the reality is we want to actually load our own. So we're going to go ahead and edit the boot JavaScript. And that is what the homepage asks us to do. But this code right here needs to point to yours. Now, you could go ahead. First of all, you got to pick the name, and hopefully John 1 is available. Okay, URL is available. I just tabbed out of that, and it shows me it's available, so that's good. Nobody else has taken John 1 as a workspace name. I could edit this manually, but um, there's actually a lot of help uh, given to you. Um, right here is the example code for the chili pepper load statement. So I'm going to go ahead. And just copy this, go back to the boot script, select all, delete, paste it in, and hit save. Okay, it saved it, and it says go redirect to John 1, and lo and behold, here is my workspace, workspace-john1. Pretty easy, folks. Not much to it. Um, I could go ahead and connect to my serial port JSON server and, and do some other stuff. 